Hey guys, I almost forgot to go live again. I was on the chat answering questions, just having so much fun. But then I thought, oh my gosh, it's three o'clock. It's time to get started. Thanks so much for joining me for another weekly chat. I'm Angela Walters from Quilting is My Therapy. And if this is your first time to my live chat, welcome. Basically every Thursday at 3 p.m. Central Time, I get on and talk about a quilting topic and answer your questions live. And if you hop on early, there's a little uh, chat type chat and I get on there about half an hour early and answer questions on there or take questions to address during the video. So it's a lot of fun and I really enjoy interacting with everybody. So hopefully you'll come back for more. If you like the chat or the video or um, any of the videos you see on my website or my YouTube channel, be sure to subscribe so that you get a notification when I go live. And even if you can't make it live, no worries. These stay on my YouTube channel afterwards, so you can always access them later. Um, but for this live chat, we're going to be talking about marking tools and how I like to use marking tools for my machine quilting, which ones I like to use. But of course, I will give you the reassurance at the end. It doesn't matter what you use as long as you love it. So. First, let's talk a little bit about giveaways. So this week's giveaway is a t-shirt quilt kit. If you watch the newest episode of The Midnight Quilter, you might have seen this quilt. T-shirts are not included or interfacing, but all the fabric that you need to make the top and the binding. All you have to do to enter is after the video, after the chat is over, check out the uh, see more or the description box and there's a link in there to enter and I'll announce the winner next week. Um, last week's winner for the Inked Rainbow Panel giveaway was Debbie Rice. She's already been emailed. So congratulations, Debbie, for that. And a good luck to everybody. Hopefully you will be the lucky winner of that panel or the quilt kit. So this um, real quick about the uh, Midnight Quilter. It's a fun little video series I do. Um, my son is graduating high school. Isn't that crazy? I know, I know, I don't look old enough to have a son in high school. Um, he would be so mad if he knew I use this picture, but he doesn't watch my videos anyway, so totally fine. Um, and then here's the quilt kit that you're getting. So I made the quilt featuring his t-shirts because, you know, he has acquired quite a few of them. And it kind of reminded me of an earlier episode for another show that used t-shirt quilts. And so somebody even put on the chat, I saw the Father's Day quilt you did. Um, and so the funny joke about that is if you saw that video, the whole idea was that I stole my husband's shirts and made a quilt for him. I didn't steal his shirts. People were really worried about that. Nope, didn't steal them. They were all from Kohl's. So no, no shirts were hurt during the filming of that. So to win that quilt kit, just be sure you enter and I'll draw a winner next week. So, and if you don't win, you can still get the kit or the thread collection or the pattern on my website. So you can check that out as well. Okay, let's talk about marking tools. Now, before we get into the demos and stuff, I just wanna show a couple things that I don't actually have on me to demo. So first of all, you're gonna hear me talk a lot about pounce pads or chalk marking. This is a new product, or this is a product that I don't have with me right now, but we carry it, it's great. It's the ultimate marking pencil, and it's actually a solid form of that pounce powder, pounce powder, kind of hard to say, pounce powder that um, you'll see here in a second. So if you want a little bit more control of your marking, this is a great option, and as well as the handy iron off pencil. So these are great too, because you can mark your tools and then iron it off. So these are new ones, that I, newer ones compared to what I'm already using that I really like. Um, so, but I don't have them with me to demo. So I just wanna show you those real quick. But let's get to what I do have with me and what I want to show you how I like to mark my quilts. So here's the thing about marking your quilts. It's a great idea if you're newer to quilting or if you just wanna have that guideline to follow. I mean, if you think about it, when you sit down to machine quilt, you're not only moving the fabric and learning how to machine quilt, you're learning a design. So it's kind of like learning how to drive a car and navigate a new city at the same time, right? So sometimes when you're just trying to get comfortable with moving the quilt or the machine and breathing at the same time, having that line to follow is gonna be very helpful. It's kind of like your roadmap. Um, but the thing is, it's gonna help give you a roadmap to follow, but whatever you do, don't feel like you have to hit that line perfectly. It's a suggestion, it's a guideline. So even if you don't hit that line perfect or it's not exactly how you marked it out, that's fine because once you remove those markings, nobody's gonna see it anyway. So these are more of a help, an aid to help you with your machine quilting. Don't let it be a source of discouragement for your quilting, for sure. Okay, so I like to, kind of say I'm an old dog. You know, have you heard the saying, can't teach old dog new tricks? When I started machine quilting, Drake was six months old. So that's been about 18 years ago. 
once I found the things that I liked, I never really moved on from there. So I know that there are a lot of great marking tools out there and I'll try to talk about some of them. There were some great questions about it, so I'll be sure to address those. Um, but these are just the ones that have always worked for me, so I've just always stuck with them. So, but if you have something that works for you, great, you should probably use those. But these tools right here are the ones that I use almost all the time. And I'll talk about when I do mark and why and where, uh, but for first, let's just talk about the, the actual tools themselves. So this is your standard, basic, water-soluble Mark Be Gone pen. This is my favorite marking tool because it's always came off for me. Right? So as long as I know it's going to come off, I'm happy. And I figure it hasn't let me down yet, so why you know, give up on it now? So it's just blue marker, and so then I can just mark my reference lines or my designs, and then it removes with a spray of water. So usually what I'll do is I'll mark it as I'm going and then remove it with my spray bottle. Or if it's just a little mark, maybe sometimes I'll get a Q-tip and get it wet and just poke it on there. Here's the main drawback to this particular tool though. If your quilt has a fabric that's going to bleed, ugh, that's kind of scary to spray water on it. And for me, quilting for customers for so many years, I was always scared like, oh my gosh, if their quilt bleeds while I'm quilting it, that's my fault. If it bleeds while they're washing it, that's their fault. So I would always kind of double check um, the fabric and make sure that it's gonna come out. But this has been a great tool. Now, of course, since it's blue, it doesn't work on blue fabric. So I do have a white chalk pencil I'll use in those instances, but definitely one I like. The biggest drawback to this besides having to get it wet is sometimes if you don't saturate it enough, it will come back. So you just have to keep spraying it and then until it goes away. Um, that's why I don't like to mark out the whole design. We'll talk more about that here in a second. Uh, but just know that if it reappears, it's just because there wasn't quite enough water, just spray it again. So sometimes this can be a, a downfall if I am um, trying to get a quilt done fast and back to a customer back in the day, didn't want to give it to them wet. So this is what I use there. Secondly, um, what I use for bigger areas or for all of our designs, I'll use my pounce pad. So it's basically just a chalk pad. I'm going to show you how this works, but it's available in blue and white. I've got one of each and I mean, it lasts forever. So you don't need much more than that. Now, when it comes to what I mark, here's the thing about stencils, and we're going to talk about this. You should buy whatever stencil it is that you're going to use. That's the most important thing. But I found that I really like guidelines or registration marks that I can use to create my design. If you think about it, it's going to be quicker and easier to mark and quicker to remove. So instead of maybe marking out the whole design, I'm just going to mark out part of it, or the registration marks. And I'm going to show you some examples of this here in a second but I really like these just for helping mark my registration lines. And I have another one somewhere, but I don't know where I put it. Oh, here it is. So these are the three I use almost all the time. I've got my two inch lines. This is great for borders. It's gonna quickly mark out a border area for me and even comes with some little uh, suggestions right there. These are not my stencils. They're actually by Designs with Lines. They've been around forever, um, but I just, I love them. They're so versatile and so useful. Then there's this one. This is the uh, Basic 8. This is probably the one I use most of the time. If I had to pick one stencil I use more than ev any others, it's going to be this one. So what this will do is help me find the center point of my bigger blocks. It'll also give me registration marks along this diagonal for dot to dot, and we'll see more of that here in a second. So this is really helpful. And then this one I really like too, it's the um, nine patch. So this is great if I want to take a bigger area and divide it up into those smaller squares and maybe quilt something more complex like a star or something like that. So these are the, the stencils I use almost all the time. Now what's awesome about, let's do this one. What's awesome about the pounce pad is using it's really easy. I'm just gonna kind of tap on it and it's gonna prime that chalk. Then holding this in place, all I have to do is kind of rub it along my stencil. And then when I remove it, I have my lines. Now, this chalk, you can iron it off, or you can brush it off or use water, but I find that it removes nice and easily. So I can kind of mark my area, I can do my continuous curve, or my designs that I want to fill in here, and then usually I can brush that chalk right off. So definitely in areas that I don't want to mark with the pen, uh, the pen because of the water issue, or it's just so fast how quick it goes on there. Now here is the one drawback to marking with this, is it does come off easily, so if I marked the whole quilt, I might get in a situation where by the time I get to it, maybe it's rubbed off. So I tend to mark my quilts on the fly or as I'm quilting, whether it's on my sewing machine or my long arm. So as I get to that square, that's when I'll mark it out. 
because sometimes I might change my mind, right? I don't want to take the time to mark out the whole quilt and then get to that point and realize, oh, I changed my mind. So there's that. Or maybe a design that I'm marking out is hard at first, but as I get to quilting it over and over again, I realize that I can probably freehand it without um, marking it. So sometimes it keeps it a little bit easier, uh, more efficient on my time. So those are the marking tools I use the most and my stencils. But I know that sometimes there's a stencil you just want to use or there's a shape that you just love. And that's where these are going to come in handy. Now, these are my favorite stencils, too. They are um, full line stencils, and I like them because they're silk screen, so they're not going to get bent or creased and they're kind of easy to store that way. I'll show you some more examples here in a second, but where it's light right here is actually small holes that if I were to rub my chalk over it, it would mark out that design for me. But here's the thing. When I started quilting, I really wanted to quilt feathers. I wanted to quilt feathers so bad and I could not do it. I mean, it was bad. And I was practicing and trying and struggling and looking at Kimmy Bruner's feathers. Oh my gosh, she's like the feather queen. I was like, I just want to be able to do a feather. So finally, finally, I bought a stencil. And when I bought the stencil, it was a feather stencil. It wasn't this one. I would mark it out, and then I would quilt it. And then I would mark it and quilt it. And it's giving me those guidelines to follow so that I got more comfortable with it. But the thing about stencils is just because you paid for the whole thing doesn't mean you have to use the whole thing, right? So if I quilt this feather a couple times, I might find that, you know what? I'm getting pretty good at the inner feathers. So maybe I just mark out the outer feathers and the spine. Or maybe I get to a point where I'm like, oh, I can do the feathers just fine. Maybe I just mark out the spine so I have that guideline to follow. So don't feel like you have to always use it. Use it to help you get to that next point. And then once you don't need any more, you can trade it with another, trade stencils with another quilter or, you know, just keep it for, you know, nostalgia's sake. So stencils, you can mark all of it or just part of it. One second, I'm going to drink. And whatever stencil you get, make sure that it is a continuous line one. Sometimes we'll see some cute stencils that are hand quilting. Those are awesome, but they will drive you batty because they're not gonna be continuous. I brought just a couple other examples of the full line stencil before we get into the examples. Um, they come in different sizes, you know, longer, bigger, and it doesn't matter. There's no right or wrong one to use. It just depends on what you want to make. So if I have trouble, getting those nice straight lines, I'm going to buy the stencil. If I don't worry about that, I'm not going to buy that one. Or if it's a design that I have a hard time freehanding. So there are those designs that if they're not quilted symmetrical, they're going to look wrong. Baptist fans are one of those. Um, I would say also clamshells sometimes if they're not super symmetrical. So if it's a design that you don't want to have to worry about keeping it symmetrical, you might find that easy or even all overs like that. But ultimately, it doesn't matter what stencil you get, just as long as you want to use it on your quilts. All right, so let's talk about how I'm going to actually use these marking tools on quilts or what kind of things I do with them. So let's kind of open this up. So when I'm marking it, I don't necessarily feel like I have to mark the whole design, right? So if I'm using my stencils, my design with line stencil, and let's pretend I want to do this kind of motif that goes from outer corner to inner corner and working its way around, I could mark that out, totally fine, or I could just quickly mark these reference points here. And so even if I'm using my pounce pad, I'm just gonna run it over those points that I need. Maybe if it's those outer corners, maybe a little bit of the center, that's gonna give me those guidelines that I need to mark. So maybe not even the whole line, maybe just a little bit. Again, I'm a little like extreme when it comes to efficient quilting, because um, when I quilted for customers, it was all about time. And so I try to do the most efficient thing possible. So another thing you can do is let's look at some examples here. I also like to look at my quilt for reference points for my, my quilting. And if there's reference points on the quilt already, even better, I don't have to mark it out. So in this particular example, I, don't, I do have some reference lines, right? I have my corners, but I didn't really have my midpoints. And I don't know, you probably can't really see it, but there's a little dot right there. That's the reference line that I marked right there, and I just forgot to come back and erase it. So that is all the marking I did for this design. These corners, there's another one right there. So that I can just kind of somewhat line it up. Again, remembering if it's not perfect, it's fine, because those lines are usually erased, except not there. 
and it's nobody's going to be able to tell anyway. So again, you don't have to mark out the whole design. You definitely can. If it helps you, go ahead and do it. But sometimes what can happen is if we mark out the whole design, sometimes it can be tricky to know where to go next. So there are certain designs where I'll say maybe mark out the first couple steps, quilt them, and then mark out the next couple steps, and then quilt them. Because sometimes when you add all the lines, you're not sure where to go next. And this right here is a perfect example of it. So this is the sample from my machine quilting with rulers challenge. Um, and this particular design is really easy to make. I'm basically just quilting diagonal lines that, you know, work their way around. But if I had marked that whole design out before starting, there's no way I'd remember where to go once I got going. So maybe marking out a section and then continuing on another section and continuing on. But like I said, sometimes there are reference points on your quilt, so you don't have to mark it out. In this particular middle of my quilt, I have these elements to the design right here that I could use as my reference lines. And this was just taking a curved ruler and rotating it around that center point. So here, all I really had to mark was that center point so I know, knew where to kind of land in that middle. But I'm looking for those reference points so I don't have to mark it. Okay, another thing here. So remember this designs with line stencil. This is so great for borders. It's gonna quickly mark my borders into sections. And that's what I did with this particular design. And all I did is I marked one way and then I just you know, kind of offset it and marked another set of lines. Well, there I have all those reference lines that I need. But like I was already showed you, you don't have to mark the whole line. If I wanted to, I could just use my water soluble marker and just mark that little dot right up here so I don't have the chalk that's in the way. And it really depends on the quilt that I'm working on. If it's a quilt of white fabric, of course, I'm gonna have to use my blue marker. Um, or if, if I really want those guidelines all marked, I could do that as well. And then I could angle them if I need to or overlap them and make different designs. Really, fa really fast and fun and versatile. So when I'm marking it out, sometimes I'm marking the whole line, sometimes I'm just marking the dot, just marking only what I need to finish it up. Now another way I use markings is to kind of give me a, uh, an area to fill in or a, more of a guideline too. So here I have my, <clears throat> sorry, let me scoot it up over. It's like backwards, there we go. I have this design here where I alternated wavy lines and I threw in some clamshells. Now, if I wanted this to be more purposeful in the placement, maybe I wanted them to make a certain path, I could use my marker just to kind of mark in general where I want those to go. So that's kind of like what I did on the cathedral quilt. I wish I had it or pictures to show you. That was last week's episode of the Midnight Quilter. I marked out some of those dots around the outside where I wanted them to go, just as a reference line. So even though I'm not quilting along the lines, I'm still using it as a guideline to help me see. Now, sometimes this could be, maybe the quilt is bigger than the area that I have to look at and I want it to make this secondary pattern, right? So maybe I want these blocks right here to be a certain way. Well, if I'm quilting on my sewing machine, I might not know where I am at any given point so having those reference lines will just kind of remind me, hey, you need to switch it up here. Sometimes I'll use pins to do that as well. All right, another example of how I use um, the stencils and things to mark is to give me some guidelines right here. So in this particular design, scoot it, scoot it, here we go. In this particular design, I'm going from corner where I'm touching, perfect, and then I'm going here where I'm not touching. So I have my, oh gosh, sorry. There we go. So I have this line right here. Well, what I could do, if I wanted to make sure it's symmetrical, because quilting looks best if it's symmetrical, I could place my stencil on my square, right, so I can see it, and then I could either with chalk or this marker mark out the same point on each side. It's also gonna help me find the center point, which I'll show you here in a second. So again, just quickly finding those reference lines so I don't have to mark it out. I could just go ahead and start quilting. And so in this particular design, you know, quilting, coming back, touching that point and back, so using that to kind of give me that guideline. And this particular example right here is a perfect example of a design that I would do with this stencil. <clears throat> it's a continuous curve motif. You can see a little bit better over here, where it's kind of curving from each point to the center and then out to the next and back. So this one is one I use a lot in a lot of different ways. But if I want to find this middle side, these corners, I can use that stencil to do it. 
but sometimes I don't need to, right? It just depends. If this block is pretty small, I can eyeball the midpoint pretty close. And I know it close enough is gonna be good enough. So I might just kind of, okay, great, that's where that is, and mark that point. So again, I know I keep saying it, but stencils are meant to be a tool, not a crutch. Don't, don't feel like you have to mark out everything. Now, funny story. The marking tool I probably use the most is my thumbnail. <laughs> so if I was marking this right here, I might take my thumbnail and make a little crease in the fabric so I can see where that's at and then go to it. Um, really easy to remove because I don't have to worry about taking anything off, anything off of the quilt. Or if there's like a piece of like the fabric here, maybe there's a little element to the print that I can use as a guide like, oh, there's a little dot right there. I'm aiming for just below the curl, whatever. I'm using those reference points to help me, to help me fill it in. So, you know, whether you're marking out the whole design or just part of it, it's really going to be a lot more um, beneficial. So those are the tools I use. Let's talk about other tools, though. Um, I have the sew line pencil. I like that. That's if I'm marking, you know, really light fabric. I mean, I have white pounce and I have the blue pounce, but if I just need a little mark and I just need to erase it right off. A fun story just reminded me, um, I learned how to quilt from my husband's grandpa. If you saw my trunk show live chat, I already talked about that. He hand quilted everything and he would mark out his hand quilting stencils with a pencil, with a mechanical pencil, and he would just erase it when it was done. So, you know, maybe a good old mechanical pencil will work. Um, also the Frixon markers, you probably heard a lot about those. Those are really fun. There's markers, there's Frixon pins, there's all sorts of things. The idea being that you could, if I could get this open, oh, you could mark your dot or whatever and then just erase it with the friction of the lid and it would come off. Um, I don't have anything against these. It doesn't come off, I think, as quick and as, as easy as the uh, water soluble because I could just spray it and it goes away. And um, it makes me just a little nervous, I'm not going to lie. I, don't, I just, I don't know. I have had people use them with no problem, love it, great. I'm super happy for them. Um, but I do use Frixon markers if I'm like lining, marking the back of my quilt blocks for half square triangles or something like that. So I do use them, just not usually on the front. And another unorthodox marking technique is I have heard of quilters that like to use washable markers to mark out their quilt and then wash it. <clears throat> Again, that makes me just a little nervous. I know it's washable and it's supposed to come out, um, but I'm just gonna stick with the water soluble marker and the chalk for now. Especially since I quilted for customers, I don't wanna get into the situation where I have to wash their quilt to make it come out. So those are the tools that I'm using almost exclusively, but again, I just want to reiterate that you can use whatever you want, mark whatever you want, however much of it you want, in whichever way that you want. I mean, it, it really is whatever you will do is what you should do. Um, but these are just the ones that have always worked for me. Now, we've all heard the scary stories, right, where somebody has marked a quilt and it hasn't come out. I do have an experience with that one time. I marked out a whole quilt <clears throat> with chalk pencil it was for a designer, a fabric designer, and it, no problem. I tested it. It came right off. It, I can't remember exactly why I used chalk. I think it's because it was green or something. Anyway, get that whole thing done, and it's not coming out. I mean, I'm erasing. I'm, like, freaking out. It was so scary. I was like, I tested it, and it came out. Now it's not. And I ended up having to take a um, toothbrush and some, I think it's grandmother's spot remover, and just kind of working every single line of the quilting and it was a lot so that was not fun um, but sometimes those things happen but, but make sure you double check before you do anything to make sure that it's going to come out because it's just it's no fun when that happens it's very very scary <laughs> anyway so I'm going to peek over real quick and just see if there's any questions um, there were a couple of questions that came up so let's talk about those um, somebody asked is it common for Frixon pins to ghost I'm not gonna speak too much about this because it's, I, I don't have a whole lot of experience with the Frixon markers, um, but what I will say is I, I think that they can maybe come back in certain temperatures or there's a whole thing about it. I'm sure everybody in the chat will definitely um, comment on there. I don't know if it's common for it to do it or not. I don't use them very much, so I don't know if it is. So hopefully it isn't. I think during the live chat, somebody was um, talking about how for a certain temperature it comes back, but anyway. Oh, this is a great, oh, Margie, great question. So there are air erasable markers. Um, she said she's always used them and had a problem finding them lately. Any suggestions on an alternative? Yes, I'll make a note, um, Margie, and put it in the description box here in a little bit. 
So funny story, I had some marking pencils. I had this one and a purple one, and I just thought it was a purple water erasable marker. So I marked out my whole quilt. It was early on. Next day I come down and it's gone. It all just went away. So the error erase is great if you know that you can't get it wet and you know that you're going to quilt it right then because it's not fun to uh, come back and have the whole thing gone. Lesson learned. And I will say I have marked out whole cloths with my Mark Be Gone pen and came out and removed it years later. You know, so I didn't actually get around to quilting it as fast as I thought I would and it came out with no problem. So um, definitely fun. Okay, somebody said something about uh, putting it in the freezer and the marks came back, so I don't know. I wish I could speak more about that. I don't know a lot and I don't want to say the wrong thing. Okay, this is a great question, uh, C. Clausen. How do I keep thread build up or threads from building up where it meets in the center? So let's switch back real quick to the design here. I'm sure we're talking about this right here. So it is going to be thread heavier in the center. It's supposed to be that way. It's definitely just part of the design. Um, but what will, what will really help with that is using a thinner thread. So I like to use 40 to 50 weight thread, and that's really going to help keep it from becoming overwhelming. Um, this particular quilt I use So Fine, and So Fine is a 50 weight poly, and it's matte. It doesn't have any shine. It's not, su it's not super thick. And that means even if it contrasts a little bit on the darker fabric, it doesn't show up too much. So um, it's not going to have too much thread buildup. Also, keeping the thread similar in color will help. Now, you might say, okay, it matches here, but it doesn't match here. Why is that? I didn't want to switch threads in between quilting, so I just, you know, sometimes it contrasts and sometimes it doesn't. But I would rather use light thread on dark fabric than dark thread on light fabric. That will help keep that thread buildup in the center from showing up too much. And on a different note, that's assuming that all the lines land perfectly on the same spot, and I don't think I've ever got that to happen. So they're actually not right on top of each other, even if it looks that way. So hopefully that answers your question. So the threads will build up in the center, but we're not gonna worry too much about it. All right, um, another question. This is a little off topic, but I thought it was a good point. Carol said, can I talk about the Sweet 16, the Handy Quilter Sweet 16, and I'm gonna throw in the Capri as well. It's a sit down long arm. What, what is this about and what is it? So a long arm mostly just speaks to the length of throat space, right? So I have a long arm, but my particular long arm works on a frame where I'm moving the machine. The sit down long arm is still a long arm, but I'm going to be moving the fabric. So I would call it a stationary long arm or a sit down long arm. So the main difference is, yes, you're going to be moving the fabric much like you would on a sewing machine. So the hand movement is exactly the same. If you're used to quilting on a sewing machine, or you want to sit because you can't stand for long periods of time, or you really like your hands on the quilt, then the sit down long arm is going to be a good bet. The great thing about it though, is it has that bigger throat space. So you can move your arms in all different directions and have so much more control of it. Plus, especially on the handy quilter, I can't speak to other machines. That hopping foot mechanism allows the quilt to easier or glide easily through your uh, around as opposed to on your sewing machine. So, it's a long arm, but it's a stationary long arm. You're still moving the fabric, and it just depends on which one. There's really no right or wrong with that. And Georgia says she loves her sweet 16. So fun. Deborah, soap shavings for marking, great. Yep, and um, Hera markers are like make little divots, kind of like I did with my fingernail are great options. Um, but yes, soap definitely works great, and it smells nice. I love it. I love it. I love it. And Taylor's chalk is same thing. Yep, very good. Um, and then Julie said, ultimate pounce will erase with heat, but regular pounce will smear because it has chalk. And I don't, I've never got to the point where I've had to remove the pounce with heat. I've always been able to brush it off or even just take a, I don't know, a, a brush and kind of get a little wet and just brush it off. So usually the problem is that it goes away too fast then instead of uh, staying too long. All right, so hopefully that helps give you a little uh, glimpse into marking tools. Again, it doesn't matter what you use, just use what you will use. If you have any questions about any of the things I've shown, there is a link in the description box that will take you to my website and will show you a little bit more about that. And next week's live chat, I am so looking forward to, it's gonna be on thread painting. So the idea that I'm gonna show you how I like to use thread to add a little bit more depth and detail to some art quilts or maybe a pictorial quilt. We're not talking full on, full on thread painting, but definitely using different colors to create a beautiful texture. 
Now, like I said, I've been, I'm doing this every week and next week is the last one I have scheduled. So I need to get the next chunk of live chat scheduled. I need some topic ideas. So if you have a specific thing that you'd like to see, leave it in the comment section. Um, definitely helps to see what's being asked for because uh, it's definitely a lot easier to know that I'm answering the questions that you have instead of the ones that I'm just assuming you have. On a different note, I'm super excited to say that the Free Motion Challenge Quilting Along will be announced March 18th. So the Free Motion Challenge Quilting Along is a video series where we work through a design or a technique, machine quilting design or technique, and um, on a project together. And today, I picked up the fabric for next week's or next month's challenge. Oh, it looks so good. I can't wait to show you guys. So definitely stay tuned for that. Well, I hope you all have a great week. I hope you found this helpful. And if you did, please thumbs up or subscribe. And I'll be back next week so we can talk about thread painting with our sewing machines. Until then, happy quilting, everyone.